Hey everybody, it's Maxwell Ventura, realtor with the District Group of Douglas Element here in downtown San Diego. Today, I'm talking about why the highest offer isn't necessarily the best offer. Stay tuned. So a common phrase that we hear in the industry is highest and best. Just submit your highest and best. What does that mean? Highest uh, is referring to the purchase price, but best is referring to the terms. And terms play a big, big role, and there's many reasons why the highest offer may not necessarily be the best. So we're gonna dive into a number of ways to strengthen an offer, and uh, we'll start with some of the small things. So escrow length. Typically, it's better to be able to close quicker, but not all the time. So as an agent on the buy side, you need to do your due diligence and reach out to the listing agent and see what the seller's needs are. Maybe they need a rent back. So in, if that was the case, you can offer a rent back, and this could be as a per diem cost, which typically um, per day, you extract whatever the pity value is, P-I-T-I, Principal Interest Taxes Insurance. Um, you also can offer that rent back for free, and the rent back can be a few weeks, it could be a couple months. So that could be a great way to strengthen the offer, but you won't know what the other side needs until you ask. Next is the earnest money deposit. That's the EMD. It's gonna be between one and 3%, and that's your, um, it's your collateral, it's your skin in the game. And so um, 3% is the maximum in the state, but the more that you show or the more that you input on the offer, the better it's going to look. Next, we're gonna dive into really the meat of the terms, and those are your contingencies. So you have um, three main contingencies, the appraisal, the loan, and your due diligence. Now with the appraisal, you can either choose to shorten the timeline, you can include some form of gap coverage, meaning that if the appraisal falls short of the agreed upon purchase price, you're willing to cover a certain amount up to the amount that you agreed upon. So that's a great way to strengthen an offer and obviously the best uh, way that you, to strengthen an offer with the appraisal is to remove it completely. So whether the appraisal comes in 5,000 under the agreed upon price or 50,000 or 200,000, if you remove that contingency, you're telling the seller that you are going to eat the difference no matter what. Great way to strengthen an offer. Next contingency is the loan contingency. Now, this is only applicable if you are financing. So this is where cash offers really shine because cash offers typically do not have, it's not gonna have a loan contingency or an appraisal contingency unless they're getting their own. Now, if you are financing, short of removing the loan contingency completely, which again is something I recommend you consult with your agent and with your lender, um, you can at the minimum shorten that timeline. The standard in California is 17 days, so whatever, again, whatever the lender is comfortable with you shortening, um, that's a great way to strengthen an offer. And then last is due diligence. Due diligence, um, a standard timeline is 17 days, so by shortening that, that can make your offer more competitive and by removing the due diligence portion completely, you're telling the seller that you are purchasing this home as is. Now technically every purchase is as is until you ask for something while you're in escrow, but by removing the physical inspection due diligence clause, you're, you're telling the seller that you are not going to ask for any repairs uh, no matter what you find. Now you can still go ahead and do your due diligence and have your inspections while you're in escrow, um, even if you do remove that contingency, but you're just telling the seller that you're not going to ask for any repairs or credits by doing so. Next, I'm gonna dive into a couple little tricks. Um, a big one is you can pay the seller's closing costs. So if we estimate that the seller's closing costs are gonna be around 1% of the agreed upon purchase price, well, just factor that into your numbers, into your deal. Next is a rent back. We kind of went through that, but you can offer a rent back to the sellers if they need it. And one more neat little add-on to strengthen your offer is an escalation clause. You are essentially telling the seller that your offer is here, you're willing to go up to here, you're willing to go higher than the highest offer that they have, and you'll say by the certain amount that you're willing to beat it by, and up to a certain point, whatever your cap is. So this can be a great clause when you know there's gonna to be tons of offers on a property, 